While there may still be concerns about Europe, but IHS Global Insight is more optimistic. It has raised its global growth forecast for 2011 up to 3.7 percent. Well, joining me now is its chief economist, Nariman Beravesh. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You. I wanted, first of all, before we actually touch on Europe, because we have this amazing poll coming out today, just to gather your thoughts on what the State of the Union address did yesterday. We heard President Obama saying he doesn't want any divisions, right. but he's also laid off the austerity cuts. Yeah, I think he's taking a much more pragmatic approach to the economy, mm -hmm. to business. It's less partisan, it's less political, if you will. And, and I think this is going over well with the business community, who seem much more open to working with him now. So this is all very good for the U.S. economy. It's good for the president himself, of course. So I think the tone that he's set is a much more cooperative one, if you will. Um, on the issue of the, the, the cuts, I think the view from Mr. Obama's perspective and the, and most American economists is that, yes, they should do something about the fiscal deficit in the U.S., but not yet. Let's wait maybe a year, maybe two, uh, before we do anything very dramatic. Is this the view that we should also have here in Europe? Because by speaking well, to yeah. CEOs, a lot of yeah. them worry that we're, we're just slashing too much. I think the circumstances are a little different. The U.S. is a huge economy. It's still got the world's premier reserve currency. It has the luxury of being able to do or not do things that Greece, for example, doesn't have. So I think this, it's, it's a little different. So the comparison perhaps is not completely fair. And what about default? Because you talk about Greece not having a luxury of, of doing that, That's but actually right. at the moment it really is prohibitive. Are we going to see a breakup of the Eurozone in the next four years? We're less worried about a breakup than we are about some kind of restructuring of the debt or default, depending on how it happens. I think in the end that's much more likely, certainly in the next couple of years, than a country leaving. I think the costs of, say, Greece leaving are huge, um, whereas I think a, a restructuring, if you will, of its debt is more manageable. Now, mind you, investors would have to take a big haircut. 30%, 40%, something like that, for it to be worthwhile. So this is not going to be fun for anybody. <laughs> but 30 40%, I mean, it's incredible figures. If yeah, they do take such a right. haircut, that's does right. it mean that the banking system will take a, a very big hit? The answer is yes, but I suspect there will be a lot of government help at the, at the, uh, at the Eurozone level, at the national level for banks, because they understand, I mean, the governments understand that this is the implication, of course, of all of this. And so, so yes, I mean, the banks will be hit, but they'll get a lot of help, I suspect. So you, you're thinking of some kind of subsidies? Because it's true, it's also interlinked. Yeah, that's right. Subsidies, bailouts, um, any number of things along those lines will have to be done. So you're pretty confident, actually, that the European can take care of this? I think, you know, let's be honest, Europe is a very rich part of the world. The resources are there. It's the politics that, of course, always get in the way. But it's certainly Europe has the resources to do this, to fix this. Norman, thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. today.